back everybody just flew in from doing my first dj set so i just landed and uh i wanted to cook a little something for you tonight we're actually going to do two dishes we're going to do some of everybody's favorite but no one can ever reproduce it at home we're going to do a little cacio e pepe like four ingredients really simple a little technique so tonight you're going to actually learn a little something and then we're going to take some leftover stuff, okay? We probably have some stuff we've, we've cooked, we've made. Now what do we do with it? And we're going to do a little uh, chicken and pea and risotto stuffed in a bell pepper with some cheese and some breadcrumbs. Very simple. And tonight's wine is from Laguna. Laguna is a northern Italy town. This wine here is 100% Trebbiano. Crisp, lots of citrus, peach, apricot. Perfect light white wine for pasta and stuff the peppers. Does anybody know where Cacio Pepe is from? And what cheese do you use in Cacio Pepe? I like that. I like that a lot. Mm. Perfecto. All right. So I'm going to start the risotto. And I have the classic Oborio rice. Okay? We have some onions. We have our roasted rotisserie chicken that I bought yesterday. That I'm going to turn into something today. I saved... The rotisserie chicken glace that comes in free when you buy the chicken. We've got our peas, we got some basil, we got our tomato product, we got some breadcrumbs, and of course we have our peppers. I like to stuff the peppers in half this way instead of top to bottom. This way you get two different type, two sides. Okay? So first we're heating up our pan. And the rice always starts with a little onion. And you'll hear that saying, we want to cook our onions till they're translucent. And then we are going to add, ooh, add our rice, and then we're going to toast that. We're not going to brown it, but we're just going to give it so that the oil gets all around every kernel of the rice. And then we're going to bloom the rice. We're going to cook the rice in the pot all together. We're going to use some hot water here. I don't have any stock, so I'm going to use hot water. Uh, I have my water boiling also for the pasta, so it's going to do, play a double part. So this is one of those uh, things you can do together that won't have you messing up all the pots and pans in the kitchen. I know some of you out there will use every single pot in the kitchen. Now, I don't measure, but I've been doing this a long time. Uh, in case you didn't know, um, where I've been cooking, I've cooked all my years in Tampa. All. All 20. Did you work at the Hard Rock? Right? I did. Right before I worked at Chena, I was at the Seminole Hard Rock for five years. Was the banquet chef there? Was the buffet chef there? And then I was the Council Oak chef for a year. Before that, I worked with my band of brothers at Cyburns. Under Jeannie Parola, I was with Chad and Courtney, I worked with Cab from the Steakhouse, Sherry and Jeannie, my girl Jeannie, my JMT. And before that, I worked at Cybrand, I mean, for eight years. And then before that, I worked at a place called Boca in Ybor City for three years, is where I got my start with 
genie parole. Right out of school, I had no idea what I wanted to do, and I found that restaurant. Tim Dominic said Boca back in the day. Tim Dominic, what's up? You are one of those guys that was from Boca back in the day. All right, so now we're toasting the rice. And risotto is one of these things you don't walk away from, you know? You just don't. Once you start it, you stay on top of it. So now that the rice is toasting, I'm going to add a little white wine. I normally wouldn't use the wine that I'm drinking, but this is all I have. So I won't be able to eat this rice? Yes, you can eat the rice. We're going to cook the alcohol off. This is not full of alcohol-filled wine for the under-21 eaters. Ooh, alcohol! And then this is the part where you want to let all the wine cook out so there's nothing left without burning the, the rice. Then we'll start adding our hot water. Uncle Johnny's right watching. Hello, Uncle Johnny. The only uncle I have doesn't like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and you have like the best person of all, like one of the best uncles, Dustin Lord. Oh. And my great chef. chef friend Dustin Facoli is watching. He's probably trying to catch a few secrets, you know. Everybody wants to be a chef nowadays, and, uh, well, we just can't all be chefs. Alright, so we got our rice cooking pretty hard right now. Once it kind of comes to a boil, I do like to turn it down. And at the restaurant, we are going to cook this rice to kind of an al dente steak. We make so much rice, that be, this would take forever to do this to order for every table for every order. So... Uh, we, we like to pre-cook our rice so that we are then just building the dish. We're adding our rice. We're reconstituting it with some stock. And then we finish the rice uh, during, during the pickup of the, of the dish. And now I'm not going to salt this. I'm not going to do anything to it yet until we get to the rice. Till we want to start adding our ingredients to where we want it. The rice. So this takes a little while. So this is going to probably take about 15 minutes uh, from when we started. Getting all that? See that? I think Dustin's asking a question. How okay. do you know? <laughs> How do you know? <gasps> How do I know what? I have no idea. How do you know that he's learning secrets? Because that's Dustin. Because I know Dustin, he's a spy. <gasps> Dustin, I done. Now you see he's be a pomper. Who's that? He comes from Hinze, Italy. <laughs> Small town. He comes from Italy. He said, how do you know who's tapping, I guess? I don't know. He asked taping, about... taping. Oh, oh, okay. My like... sissy. He can't Danielle. tell if it's, it's all really Daniela. Because yeah. he doesn't know what it is. In case you don't know, I do have three children. <laughs> well, here's my twins. Here's my twins. Danielle's our photographer. The other one just ran off, so whatever. But... Well, I heard yeah. my your mom is watching. Say hi, Nanny. Hi, Nanny. How does he know it smells good? It really doesn't. Does he just know? Oh my gosh, he might, he might be in the house. Everyone, can't laugh. Watch yourself. Calm down.
Now I'm going to add a little bit of that chicken glace, which is just from the container. This comes with every roasted chicken from is it gelatin? Sam's Club. Is it like it's kind of like gelatin, yes. It's chicken jello. Ew, that's disgusting. It's, it's flavor. It? And when it's cold, it congeals and it makes that consistency. Alright, nerds, back up. As you can see, making risotto is a timely thing to do. Um, Dustin said, uh, "Good job to me," and he said, "You stole it. You, he, uh, you stole his idea from risotto." Oh well, because I have all the good ideas, Dustin. That's why. But, uh, uh, I'm actually doing this from the chain of page, so we hope we get more followers. For next time. Uh, you can easily use vegetable stock if you wanted to keep this uh, to make a vegetable risotto. And you can see that this rice, you can see it's starting to get the kind of translucent but white little center in there. That means the rice is starting to cook. It's starting to release the starch. Normally in the restaurant, that's, it's, there's a point where we'd like to stop it so that it does still have a little bit of the starch in it. So you kind of cook it just to the perfect al dente at the restaurant. But here we're gonna just take it all the way. We don't wanna wait for it. We're not gonna reheat this up. We're gonna go from start to finish. Add a little more just chicken stock. We hope uh, everybody made it from their first week of it's going on with Corona, Corvid, COVID, whatever you want to call this thing. It's going on with uh, China is closed. We plan to reopen whenever we get through this. We, we can't wait to be back. We'll be stronger and better than ever. Uh, this, is, this is an unfortunate time for us. Um, we praise all our other chef friends and industry friends that are out there trying to make ends meet right now. And I hope that everybody makes it through this. That, this is the first thing that's ever happened to would the world you, like um, this. Yeah. Would you like me to uh, read some comments? Yeah, sure. Read the comments. So Gloria said, teach me, uh, it's an Italian word, uh, KCO. <laughs> Pepe. Cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe. Yeah. Cacio e pepe means cheese and pepper. Cheese and pepper. So did anyone answer the question about what cheese you use for cacio e pepe? I love cheese. Yeah, we love cheese too. Someone take a guess. Wait, wait. Gloria. Chana. Oh, she misses Chana. Yeah. Oh, okay. That that did not. Mm, it says M I S S C E N A. Please, virus, to get done quickly. Our kids need to be back in school quickly. No. no, we already have to sit on the computer and look at our teacher. It's bad enough. Oh uh, well. We do. Yeah. Yeah. We got our peppers. <laughs> and I'm gonna put this right in there and raw and, and cook these. You forgot a color. We had. We're cooking what we had. about time. I'm going to add some of my tomato sauce. I'm going to add 
chicken. Now we can start to season the rice. Kosher salt. And once again, chef tip, upside down pepper. That's what these little ridges are for. It's really called the Daniela tip. Oh, on the Daniela tip. That's More wine. Cheers to everybody watching. We're going to get to that dish I know everybody wants to see is that cacio e pepe. And a few easy steps that all it takes to make restaurant quality. <laughs> Did you, um, um, uh, your person. Let me post this wine again. This is a really delicious wine. And the funny thing is today, as soon as I was going to look it up to read a little bit more about it on my Vivino wine app that I have on my phone. And freakishly enough, this was the wine that they were going to display. I have no idea how that happened. I didn't talk about it before I was going to come on. I just kind of grabbed it out of my fridge and put it on the counter. Really strange. But um, if you're into white wine, it's going to be getting hotter out. I like to drink the white wine right around dust time, right when things are sort of cooling off, but yeah, it's still pretty warm out. It's a really good bottle. Can't wait to watch it. <laughs> so, I'll put a little lid on that. It's going to keep cooking. Once again, we have our boiling water. So, here we have our traditional bucatini pasta made to use cacio e pepe. You can use other pastas, but this is traditionally the one. Okay, sorry, we're back. We have our bucatini pasta. We have our black pepper. We have what cheese? All right, Pecorino Romano. I like to use the grated stuff. And of course, some butter. This dish is basically an emulsion of the cheese and the butter, and then this guy right here. So if you cook pasta at home, you want to save a little bit of your pasta water, because that's where all the starch is, and it helps emulsify the pasta. All right. This rice is almost here. I can tell just by looking at it, it still needs to go just a little bit more. So we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, re am I allowed to read another comment? Uh, uh, if I pronounce your name wrong, I'm sorry. Um, Yil I am would like to say steak tartare. Steak tartare, oh. 
Yes, a, uh, a steak tartare would be delicious during these COVID times. Let me tell you what I maybe do have planned for the rest of the week. I bought some oxtails. I bought some chicken thighs. I've got a flank steak that I could use. Um, i got a few different classes to play with. Um, that about rounds out the proteins that I have planned. Um, we're constantly uh, having to have lunch, and everything seems to be a gourmet meal now that I'm home. Uh, what tomatoes do you use? What brand? So, we use this Pomerosa San Marzano tomato. This is the real guys. We do have this brand, but they're not San Marzano. Uh, it's the equivalent of being on the other side of the fence. So, if you know anything about the DOCs and the DOPs and the ITGs, they're, they're areas that uh, allocate only those items can come from there. So, you can have same vine going across the border, you just can't call it a San Marzano tomato. A San Marzano tomato comes from a certain area, but you still can get San Marzano tomatoes. It just won't be called that. All right, this rice seems to be we're getting to almost where we want it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to have my frozen peas in the belly. Take some pointers, Steven. This is how you do it, brother. Just gotta go for it. I'm gonna take a little bit of Parmigiano. helpful tool. Microplane. If you want a quick way to maybe uh, chef tip number two, if you want to quickly braid some garlic, some peeled garlic, peel your garlic right on here. In fact, let's add some garlic. Everybody loves garlic. Oh gosh. Cook a little longer. Will you be able to taste that gelatin? Nope, it's just gonna it just adds flavor. It will taste it again though. It needs more salt and more pepper. It's gonna be hot though, look. Cover this, I'll take it off the heat, and just let it stay right here. Okay? So, that uh, cheese and pepper thing is going to be next. Catch it with pepper. Okay. Oh, that's what the, I thought you meant. Two pepper. dishes. We're doing two dishes. 
It's three. It's two. Well, you make peppers, and then you made that rice, and now you're going to make pasta. Well, rice is going to go in the stuffed pepper. Oh, okay. And then we're going to put some breadcrumbs on top, maybe a little more cheese, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I am going to go ahead and salt my water. And your water should taste like the sea. And with this pasta, because it's looped, you never want to slam it on the counter to try and open the bag. Don't be a chooch and try to slam it on, and you're just going to end up breaking all the noodles. So, bucatini is like the straw noodle. It's got a little hole in the middle. happen very quickly. It'll come together very quickly. Any more comments there, Daniel? Uh, nah, nope. <laughs> what? Nope. Uh, George says, what's up? What's up, George? Rachel Maxwell is high, says hi. Hello, Rachel. Did you see her on Facebook? Yes, she I saw her wonderful she... San Francisco treat. It looked great. All right. Hey, you're in the water. We got our, we got our pasta down, right? Ching, ching. Ching, ching. It's really good. Can't get enough. Oh, it oh. smells like... Stop. It smells like pasta. Oh, those are really stiff. Wait, did they stay bent? No, they will They'll say what's going to happen here. <gasps> Wait, are those little noodles you always have at your work now? Yeah. All right, while well, that pasta's what? cooking, let's start the... The string noodles? Let's, let's start the pepper so we have... Sorry, sorry. So, I like to put everything on aluminum foil just because it saves me scrubbing the pan. That's just me. It's probably a better idea too, right? Well, you don't like scrubbing pans. How does that smell, Daniela? Ooh, 
smells nice. It smells like just meat, your meatballs, Dad. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Maybe meatballs got to be something we serve later, huh? I'm sure yes. we'll love to see meatballs, right? Yeah. Yes, your famous so meatballs. Like the cheese, like the light cheese on top. Will there be enough rice left? To have just the rice? Yeah. Yes. Yay. I made a little extra, I hope. Actually, he made a lot, too. Oh, so Who is Lisa Wright Butterboy? That's my aunt. Aunt Lisa. Oh, no, it's, it's daddy's. Oh, daddy's. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, daddy's. It's Poppy's sister-in-law. Aunt Lisa, right? Yeah, Aunt Lisa's sister. No, not that one. You guys have never met Aunt Lisa from New York. Oh, oh hi, Aunt Lisa from New York. Hi. Hi. You never met me, but I think I you think? know that I love you. <laughs> so, now, I'm going to take a little cheese, some fresh mozzarella, put one of those on top. No, it doesn't. One for the plant. I'm going to take a little olive oil, put them in my breadcrumbs. Kind of wet those up. Is that something burning? Yeah. We got a little spillage. It happens. A little uh -uh. Huh? That happens. Looks great, Dad. Thanks, Danielle. No problem. You getting hungry? Yes, very. We, we, we starve ourselves here. We eat very late, apparently. Because you gotta, you gotta get that board game called Clue. It's <laughs> like the best game. With all the yelling. Be and it's, it's, it's awesome. Alright, so now we're going to take these guys. So, you got a picture now? Huh? Okay. Now? Go right into a 400 degree oven. That's hot. And that's how long we use to straighten right. our hair. And this will go to the side. All right. Now, Danielle. Yes. <laughs> what? Oh, right now. Oh, oh, my God, those are mean. Dad. Hey, that just looks like my hair. Just gone. Almost there. I can't wait to eat them. Feeling. It's still not cooked yet. Can't wait to eat them. Back. But again, so now. We have our cheese. Pecorino Romano. We have our peppers. Right here. We have our salt. I like to use kosher. The reason why I used to like to use kosher is because you can feel it when you're using it. You know, you like to use iodized salt because it's a little too small. You always do a little too much, and you can't take that back. At least with the kosher salt, you can feel, you can see how much is going in. <laughs> no. Ooh, those We're almost there. This looks good. This is getting right there. All right. No, I didn't want that one. All right, so. Yeah, Sophie, you want some rice? This is my carb hound right here. Sophia, say hi. Hi, I love the pesto. That's my mine. mine. <laughs> She's a little old. Whatever that means. Say hi to Bubby in the background. Okay. Oh, millions of people love it. And you look like that. 
<laughs> You're so weak. All right, so. No use. This is the secret. Look, this is the secret. Right? Yeah. Watch how this goes. This is gonna go quick. You fry the noodles? You like that? Joan, let me try this one. No. What are you gonna do with them? Like cook them? Careful when you're adding salt. This cheese, salty. Oh my god. The, the cheese is salty, Pepper. and then you put so much of it. For all that, it's going to take one stick of butter. Now. Melted, right? Yeah. Now, look. Yeah. See this? You got your trusty pot right here. This is the secret. I'm telling you right now. Watch, this is going to happen fast. It's an emulsion of pasta water, cheese, pepper, pepper, butter. Once you start adding your hot pasta water, you can take this off the stove. Okay? Oh, Once good. again, this is just an emulsion of water, cheese, and butter. Uh, you know what it kind of looks like? It kind of looks like Alfredo. It does, but it's not. It's just his. Way better. It looks as thick as Alfredo. Dad, you want me to read some comments? Family steak from Huntington Carabas. Want me to read some comments? Yeah, sure. Oh, that's um, it. Brooke. <laughs> uh, if I pronounce your oh, last that's name. Brooke. I know Brooke, yeah. Yeah. She said you did it. Um, And then Dan uh, from. Dan uh, Fisher said, I will take it, that's in to go. And he also said, I can smell that from uh, South Tampa. Yeah, awesome. So let me tell you something right now. There's no cream in this. I didn't use any milk. I didn't use any heavy cream, half and half. This is just an emulsion of the butter. Yeah, that's the... The pasta water. So you can actually save this if you're making pastas for later. How about that? How about that? How about that? I just get some bowls. You gotta get some bowls down. Julian, get me a bowl. Oh my God. Let me tell you something about this pasta too. This this is a eat that day pasta. This is not a reheat pasta. True. Unless maybe you have a little bit of your pasta water left over for the next day. You heat up in your pasta water. Uh, Gloria said. A uh, favorite and thank you. And uh, she also said, You're the best. And then Dan said, um, How about that? And then, uh, <laughs> How about that? And, um, uh, pronounce your first name wrong. Uh, you say the first name. Yeah, uh, I, put a, I don't want to pronounce it wrong. You, I am. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, she said, Delicious. And I'm going to go with uh, Karina. Pronounce it wrong. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, uh, she said yummy. Whew. All right, Let's check on our peppers. We're browning up nicely. Is that bowl for me? Mac and 
actually going to turn the broiler on real quick for this. Let's speed this up. Uh, Rachel, Rachel said thanks. Night, love you guys. I will say this: use a good pecorino. Cheese. Spend the money on the cheese. Uh, Aunt Rana, it came in a little late. Oh, hey, it's, it's Cacio e Pepe. <laughs> Had a one, Dan. Anytime. <laughs> Once again, no cream, no milk, no nothing. Simple emulsification of water, cheese, and butter. That is the trick, that is the secret from the restaurants. And I will challenge anybody with my team on Cacio e Pepe, no doubt. Let's take a pick of these. What's going on here, see? Look at that. How about that? How about that? We're going to get all the way up in there. All the way up in that oven. All the way up in that oven. All right, folks, there you have it. Rotisserie chicken and pea risotto stuffed bell peppers with mozzarella, breadcrumbs, and parmesan. Cacio e pepe, just like you had it in Rome. I know it, I know it, I know that. I've been there, and I've had it. And let's not forget the delicious vino from Laguna, 100% Trebbiano. Till next time, take it easy. Bye.